Welcome back. This is the session on symmetric design. My name is Bart Prenel, and we have two talks. The first talk is entitled Twin Column Parity Mixers and Gaston, a new mixing layer and permutation. It's joint work between Solana El Hirsch, Johan Dahmen, Agvendra Singh Rohit, Hushi Makarim, and Solana will give the talk. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, this is an overview of the presentation. Let's first start with Ascon. So Ascon is a family of cryptographic algorithms for authenticated encryption and hashing. And it is a winner of the Nice Lightweight competition. Its authenticated scheme is based on the MobiKey duplex mode. And here we have the authenticated encryption operation that use the permutation Ascon P Sorry, uh, here highlighted in red uh, and instantiated with a different number of forms depending on where it's used. And we are going to focus on this permutation. ASCON-P operate on a 320 bit state with five row and 64 columns. It has three steps, a one constant addition, a substitution layer that works on five bit column and a linear layer that works on 64-bit uh, rows. In particular, for the substitution layer, it uses the S-box of Gechak F and two mixing steps before and after that have three bitwise addition. But those mixing steps are here due to the low diffusion step in the S-box layer. The linear layer work independently on each row. So for example, for row zero, we have that the bit at position i at the input will affect the bit at position i, I at the output, i minus 19 modulo 64, and i, module, I minus 28 modulo 64. If we look at the operation dedicated to mixing in the permutation, we see that in the Xbox and in the substitution layer, we have six, six bitwise source from the mixing step. And we have 10 big wide source and 10 cyclic sheet in the linear layer. So in total, we have 16 big wide source and 10 cyclic shifts. On some platform, those, uh, the shift operation are free. So here we omit them. So it means that the guest cost is, is 3.2 binary source operation per bit. And we want to know if we can get higher diffusion for the same guest cost. So this is the focus of our, our work. Let's first see some preliminary notion on diffusion metrics. In differential cryptanalysis, a pair of input and output difference is called a differential. And this attack exploits high probability differential. A round differential is a differential over a round function, and a differential 12 is a chain of round differentials. In linear cryptanalysis, the combination of input mask and output mask is called a linear approximation. And these attacks exploit linear approximation with high correlation. We call a round linear approximation the linear approximation over a round function. And a linear 12 is a chain of round linear approximation. So we want our permutation to avoid differential 12 with high probability and or linear 12 with high correlation contribution. The branch number is a metric for diffusion uh, that measures the diffusion realized by a mapping and that was popularized through AES. We can generalize this notion to uh, a state. So we have the branch number of a state that corresponds to the sum of the amine weight of a state plus the output obtained after, after applying the linear mapping to the, to the state. A linear mapping has a high diffusion power if there are few states with low branch number. And the branch number of a linear mapping is a minimum over all states of the branch number of a state. The mixing layer in ascon pip has a branch number of four. Now let's see the operation that we'll use uh, in our uh, linear layer. So we want to build a permutation with a round function that has a non-linear layer as in ascon pip so that works on colon independently. 
And in the linear layer, we will have a mixed layer sandwiched between two Gaussian poles. Our permutation will be applied on a set of M rows and N columns. And to be suitable for software implementation, we take that the, we have that the number of columns is a power of two. We also only consider mapping uh, that commute with a cyclic shift uh, of the state in the horizontal direction, and we call this property circulant. So our, our row show poles are similar to shift rows in Rheindahl. So we have row east and row west uh, with a different offset that will move a bit in the same row to different bit position. So here, for example, the bit in green will be moved uh, to four uh, bit uh, on the left over there. And we need to specify uh, those offsets. In the diffusion property, only the difference between uh, the offset in row east or row west matter. So we can fix one of them to zero. So in the end, we only need to specify two m two times m minus one offsets. Our mix layer is a generalization of the column parity mixer used in Kekchak F and Zudu. We can use a CPM in our uh, on our two-dimensional state, and we will get the following. So here, for example, we have an input state with a one active bit. We compute the column parity, we fold it, and then we uh, obtain the theta effect that will be added to the input state to obtain the output state. If we look at the computational cost of the CPM, we have we have m minus one in the upper row for the column parity. One the upper row for the folding operation, one the upper row for the addition to the state. So in total, we have two M the upper row. So here we have a CPM that has a computational cost of two XOR per bit. However, this is a disadvantage of a CPM. We see here that we have a, the input state and the output state that are the same. And the branch number of the CPM is four. So our sequent twin CPM is a generalization of the CPM, where instead of having one CPM, one column parity, we have two. The first one is computed as before, and the second one is obtained after shifting over some of sorry over some offset uh, the input state. Then we compute the column parity of the shifted state of the shifted state. And we fold it, and we add the two folded parity together to obtain the theta effect that will be added to the input state to obtain the output state. The twin CPM has a computational of 3.2xor per bit, like as one. And we need to specify m plus three offsets. Now let's have a look at the differential and linear properties of our twin CPM. So we have a Theta effect kernel that corresponds to the third space of state where the twin CPM acts like the identity. So here, for example, we have an input state uh, that will get its first column parity with zero active bit. And we can find offset um, that will shift uh, the input state so that the second column parity also have zero active bit. So it means that the theta effect will have zero active bit and the input and output state are the same. The branch number corresponds to the twice of number of active bits. And we want to avoid states in the kernel that have less than six active bits, otherwise they will lead to a low branch number. Outside of the kernel, we also want to avoid state with low branch number. So we specify this condition on the shift offset to achieve a differential branch number of 12. In the kernel, there are states that are not avoidable. Set, uh, that are not avoidable um, by having a condition on the, the shift of set are the orbitals and the state with less than six active bits. So orbitals are states uh, that have two active bits in the same column and lead to a branch number of at most four. And state with less than six active bits will lead to a branch number less than 12. Irrespective to the shift of set on the choice of the shift of set, we have states that are not avoidable. Those are the vortices and the row twins. The vortices are six bit states that would lead to a branch number of at most 12, and row twins are eight bit states. 
We study linear propagation from the output to the input. So we have a mask V at the output of theta that will be mapped to a mask U before theta. And we can obtain U by applying the transpose of theta to V. Previously, we had the following formula for the branch number. However, this corresponds to the differential branch number. To obtain the linear branch number, we use the transpose of theta in the formula instead of theta. We will al always have orbitals in the kernel of the transpose of theta. So it means that the linear branch number is four. We want to avoid low weight 312 in the, in the kernel of the transpose of theta in two consecutive rounds. So we want to avoid is 3-1 linear 12 with weight 12 and 24. We, however, we cannot avoid 3-1 12 with six big stakes with weight at most 36. So we have a 20 PM that has a branch number, a differential branch number of 12 and a linear branch number of four. But we can also build a mixing layer with a linear branch number of 12 and a, and a differential branch number of four by uh, transposing the twin CPM. So here, uh, for example, we have an input state uh, where we compute the column parity uh, that will be folded into uh, two different theta effects where one of them will be shifted over different offsets. We add the two theta effects to obtain the theta effect that will be added to the input state to obtain the output state. And the transpose of the twin CPM at the same computational cost than the twin CPM and then uh, and, uh, like as one B. So we also provide a proof of concept with our permutation gas form. Uh, the one function will be applied on, a, on five 64 uh, bit rows. And for the linear layer, we have a mixed layer sandwiched between those two row shuffles, where the mixed layer is a twin CPM. We also have a one constant addition. For the non-linear layer, we take the key mapping of Ketcha cap applied on a five bit colon, as it is the case in ASCOM -T. To select the offset, we gather them in a shift, um, in an offset, shift offset vector, R lambda. And we choose our lambda so that the branch number is 12. So it means that any 2 1 12 has at least 12 active columns. For the row shuffles, we choose them such that they translate the bit level diffusion to the colon level for lambda. So uh, our row shuffles need to move bits that are the, in the same column to different columns. We also minimize the number of bits that are in the same column after row east. And we eliminate any candidate that lead to low weight 3 1 linear 12. We also maximize the minimum square correlation of 3 1 squares. So now let's have a look at the differential and linear bound that we obtain for our permutation. But first, we need to select the offset. And for that, we need to generate the state. We do that with a tree based approach, where we partition the state space in classes where a class contains all uh, shifted version on a, of a given state. And we restrict our investigation on propagation to, to one representative of each class that is called canonical. So here we have three uh, equivalent uh, states, where the one in the middle is a shifted version of the one on the right, and the one on the left is a shifted version of the one uh, in the middle. And as canonical, we consider the state that has its first active bit at the smallest position. And by convention, uh, index zero is on the right. So the canonical state here is the one on the right. So we generate all state with a branch number below given target branch number. We further investigate with um, hybrid usage of SMP and MLIP to prove the differential and linear branch numbers and to obtain the best three one differential and linear 12. So this is the result that we got. So for our permutation, the differential branch number is 12, while for us P is four. We have the same linear branch number. If we look at the minimum weight of two one differential 12, we see that for our permutation is 24, while ASCON is eight. We have the minimum weight for two one linear 12. 
And if we look at the minimum weight of three round differential stress found for our permutation is 106, while for us from B is 40. For linear 12, we have that the minimum weight of three round linear 12 is 34, while for us from P is 28. So in conclusion, uh, we have a circular twin CPM that are a generalization of the CPM used in Ketchak F and Gulu that have high local diffusion and can be optimized for differential or linear branch number. We also provide a proof of concept with our lightweight permutation Gaston that has the same uh, budget in terms of gets first than ASCON P, but with better differential and linear propagation property. Thank you. Thank you very much. Plenty of time for questions. Niels, take it away. Um, your round function is more expensive. Did you compare your round function against the ASCON round function when you scale for computing power? Uh, no, we uh, it's mostly an academic work, so it's mostly about gauge cost here. Like uh, we didn't run it. Sorry, I, I can't understand you. Can you repeat the question? So, so um, your round function is about 50% more expensive than ASCON. So did you compare the, the diffusion that you get in two, two rounds compared to the ASCON one in three rounds? When it's what? I don't understand. Well, we'll take it offline. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I have a question. So is a goal to make a design competing with ASCON that actually performs better? Is that the eventual uh, goal? And now you're getting close there? Can you repeat? So is the goal of the Gaston design to make a design that is better than ASCON in terms of security performance trade uh, In terms of security performance, but with the same get cost. And so it what is... is needed to complete your design? Come on. So what is needed to complete your design? So do you are you ready to make this proposal? Oh, or? So, uh, yeah, it's not about that. It just, um, we did this work to see if it was better uh, to have better bounds, but with the same get code. That's all we wanted to see, that's all. Not, so, uh, not to be a competitor uh, with ASCON. So you have to look at other attacks as well, or? What? Did you look at other attacks and differential and linear cryptanalysis? Uh, no, uh, uh, we also need to uh, investigate more before claiming such a uh, thing. Okay, no more questions. That's Thanks, Olan, again. Thank you very much. is entitled New Design Techniques for Efficient Admitization Oriented Hash Functions, Animoid Permutations, and Jive Compression Mode. It's joint work between Clemence Bouvier, Pierre Briot, Piro Skaidos, Leo Perrin, Robin Salen, Feslin Velikov, and Danny Wilms, and the talk will be given by Clemence. The slides are already up in the Zoom session, but I guess not on screen yet. Technology, technology. Seems something is starting up there. We're ready to go. <laughs> Take it away. Hello, and so thank you for the introduction. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Anemoid. And um, well, actually, I just um, no later than yesterday that I was mispronouncing Anemoid. But for us, it has always been Animoy, so let's keep Animoy for this presentation. And before going into the details, I wanted to explain why we choose Animoy, because I feel like the most complicated part of the work when you're designing a primitive is to agree on the name for the primitive. So why Animoy? In Greek mythology, Animoy were Greek of wind. So why? Because in our design, we have a structure that is highly inspired by a butterfly structure. And you know that butterfly flies in the air. This is one of the explanations. And also, you know, that the wind can go in different directions. So this is to represent the geographical spread of the animal team. Because as you can see, we have many affiliations and we're from different parts of the world. So this is another explanation. And also, as you can see, animal is not too overused. So this is also a good opportunity to appear in the top level of local results. So it's nice. So this is how we came with our animoid. So this is a family of ZK-friendly hash functions that I will present in a few minutes. 
But first of all, I would like to recall the background because we're in a symmetric uh, station, but what I'm gonna present is really different from what we used to in symmetric control. So I will explain why. And then we're gonna present Animoy, so it is based on an option of CCI equivalence that leads to good security level and also good performance. So for the context, um, in recent years, we have seen a new trend to design new symmetric primitives for advanced protocols such as zero knowledge protocols. And those primitives are really different from what we're used to. First thing is that we're working in a new environment. Usually in symmetric crypto, we're uh, interested in working in very small field, F2 to the N, where N is like four, eight. And now we need to work in large finite field, uh, FQ, where Q is either a big prime number or a big power of two. So to give you some concrete examples, so for the AS, you know that we're working in F2 to the N, where N is equal to eight. And now, for example, we need to work in uh, FP that is given by these elliptic curves, and the P is this one. So I think we can already feel here that it is really different to work in FP with such a P than working in F to the N with a very small N. So this also means that the operations are not based on logical gates or CPU instruction, but now we need to work with large finite arithmetic. And we also have new properties because usually we're interested in having an efficient evaluation for implementation in software and hardware. And now we also want the verification to be efficient for the integration within the advanced protocol. And what does that mean to be efficient? I mean, having an efficient verification for zero knowledge proofs. Well, the answer is that it depends because it really depends on the proof system that you're using. To give you one concrete example, if we're considering L1CS, basically the idea is to minimize the number of multiplication. So if we're uh, considering this equation and we want to check that this equation is indeed satisfied, so we will write all uh, the steps for this verification and we will just count the number of multiplication. So no scalar multiplication, no addition. In the end, we get only three equations. So this means three L1CS constraints. Now let's keep this idea of minimizing the number of multiplication. A first idea to design primitive was to use the function so that the evaluation uses a few multiplication. This means that you have your input X, you apply the function for the encryption, you get the output Y, and when you want to perform the verification, you will just perform the evaluation. So this is the idea that was proposed, for example, in Poseidon. Then other idea was proposed, for example, by the designer of RESQ, is that if you have a function of low degree to perform the verification, you can use the inverse to perform the evaluation so that you have a high degree evaluation. So this is good for security reasons. And actually we're going further in that direction. And to put it simply, let's say for now, that is a kind of change of variables. And we'll use a function G of low degree to perform the verification and a function f of high degree to perform the evaluation. And this is nice because we have this kind of change of variables that we'll see later is called the CCA equivalent. So I will present the animoid permutation, which is a um, substitution permutation network that is using this notion of CCA equivalence. And more specifically, I will present uh, our nonlinear layer that is called the fly cell. So first, some definition. Again, as I've said, the inverse is one specific case of the CCA equivalence. So here we can see that if you're considering the graph of the function f and the graph of its inverse, you have a relation between those two graphs. That is simply this matrix. And now if we're allowing Altsafe to consider any type of matrix and not only this one, then we simply get the CCA equivalence. And we'll say that two function a and g are CCA equivalence if there exists enough implementation that allows us to go from the graph of the function f to the graph of the function g. And having this notion of state equivalence is really nice because we have good cryptographic properties. Good thing is that if two functions are state equivalence, then they have same differential properties. I mean, if you're looking at the differential uniformity and looking at the maximal number of solution of this equation, this is exactly the same for the function f and for the function g. You have the same for the linear properties. I mean, the maximum value of the wash transform for the function f uh, is the same for the function g. So this is nice. And we also have that for uh, those advanced protocols, we also have uh, good properties. 
because first the verification is the same. For example, if you want to check that y is indeed the output of x using the function f, you can just check that v is indeed the output of u using the function g, because you have this kind of uh, change of variables between uh, uv and xy. And you also have that the degree is not preserved between the two functions, because again, uh, the inverse is one example of this state equivalence. And if we're working in um, fp with this p, for example, and you uh, taking f that is x to the five, then the inverse of l will be uh, x to the inverse of five, and the inverse of five is this one. So yeah, of course, the degree is not preserved. But in our case, what was really interesting is that the verification is the same, because again, we want to have an efficient verification. So this is how we came uh, to the fly cell. So this is uh, our nonlinear layer for the FPN construction. So the fly cell is highly inspired by a butterfly structure and a fast cell network. It is based on three functions. So two quadratic functions, Q gamma and Q delta, and the permutation E of low degree. And then we have two variants, the open fly cell and the closed fly cell. For the open fly cell, we are uh, using the two quadratic function and the inverse of the permutation E. So this design is a high degree permutation. And then we have the closed fly cell that is using the two quadratic function and the permutation E of low degree. So this is a low degree function. And those two variants are actually cis equivalents equivalence because there is enough in permutation that allows us to go from the graph of the open fly cell to the graph of the closed fly cell. And what is the advantage of having this CCD equivalence here is that on one hand, we can have a high degree evaluation because if we're using this open fly cell, as we have the inverse of the permutation in here, this means that we have high degree evaluation because if we remember the example that we have taken before, if we're in FP with this P and we're using the permutation E X to the five, then the inverse will be this one. So this is high degree evaluation. But at the same time, we can have low degree verification. Because if we're checking that UV is the output of XY using this open fly cell, it would be quite expensive. But as the two variants are the equivalents, we can just check that uh, XU are the output of YV using this closed fly cell. We can do it because it's our state equivalent. So this is really the advantage here is that on one hand, we have high degree evaluation using the open fly cell. And on the other end, we have low degree verification using the closed fly cell. Um, then we have different variants depending on which field we're working on. So in F to the N, where N is odd, we use the cube as a quadratic function and also as a permutation. So this means that for the closed fly cell, we are only using cubes. And for the open fly cell, we have two cubes and the inverse of the cube. And Actually, if you are looking at this open fly cell, we can represent it in another way so that we can recognize for those who know this structure, a butterfly. So this open fly cell is exactly this structure that is a genetic case of butterfly. And what is nice is that butterflies are already quite well studied in Boolean functions. So we already know all the cryptographic properties and we know the differential uniformity, we know the linearity, we know the algebraic degree. And for the differential uniformity and the linearity, we cannot do better than this for this kind of construction. So this is really nice. And also in terms of the algebraic degree for the closed fly cell, uh, this is two, and we cannot do better without having a linear function. So we wanted to have also a good construction in FP. So for that, we're gonna use the square as quadratic function because we're in FP, so it's possible. But the cube is not always a permutation in FP. Uh, so we'll use x to the alpha, and alpha is equal to three, five, well, it will depend on the field, but the idea is to have a low degree exponent. That when you use the fly cell, you have only squares and this x to the alpha, and when you use uh, this open fly cell, you have square and the inverse of alpha. So for those kind of construction, we were able to determine the differential uniformity, which is at most uh, alpha minus one. And so what you can see in this graphic representation for uh, different values of A and B. So we have light colors. So this means that the number of solution is very low. So this is uh, good for us. 
And actually, um, what you can observe is that if you use, we are using the cube as the middle permutation, so this means alpha equal to three, then we have an APN permutation. And we just learned like a few weeks ago that we were solving an upper problem in Boolean functions that was to find a PN permutations over x squared, which is the fly cell is, I mean, when we're using the cube. This is nice. So then the fly cell will be used uh, as an Xbox in the SPN construction for Anemoy. So um, we can represent the state of Anemoy as a matrix with um, L columns and two rows. So why having two rows? This is because we'll apply the S-box in columns and the S-box is the fly cell. So we know that we have two elements as inputs, two elements as outputs. So this is why we apply the fly cell in columns and that we have two rows. So we also have constant addition and some linear layers and we apply a linear layer uh, in the rows to increase diffusion. And we also have a pseudo Adamac transform that can also be considered as part of the S-box. So this is the overview of one run of Anemoy. So we first have this constant addition, then the two MDS matrices as a diffusion layer. We have the pseudo Adamac transform and then the flight. So this is one run, then we repeat those operations a certain number of time. And this number is actually given by algebraic attacks. So I won't go into the details of why this formula the idea is that we know how to model Anemoy, we know how to construct polynomial equations and solve uh, probe basis. And actually we have uh, two models. Um, one uh, was easier to study, we know how it behaves, and this is where this formula is coming from. And the other one, um, well, we feel that it was taking advantage of our design, but it was more complicated to study. So this is why we are adding this uh, two round as the security margin. And we also have another security margin that is depending on the number of branches because we think that uh, having more branches is, uh, well, you give more freedom to the attacker. So this is why uh, it depends on the number of branches. And then depending on the permutation uh, that you're using and the number of branches, you have, well, between 10 and 20 rounds for the permutation. So this is anemoid permutation. And then we can use this for different purposes. The first one is for hash function to emulate a random oracle. And the next one is for a compression function with a numerical tree. And for those two purposes, we'll have uh, two different functions. So for the hash function, you know that we have an input of arbitrary length and an output of fixed ends. So we'll use a classical sponge constriction, meaning that each time that we add a block of message, we apply the animal permutation. And each time that we give an output, we also apply the animal permutation. So this is the sponge constriction. But for the compression function, we'll have a dedicated mod. So in that case, let's first consider uh, the compression function uh, towards in one. So what was done before was to use a sponge constriction. But in that case, this means that you have some uh, useless element because you need to add, to add element for the capacity. What we're proposing is a new mod so that if you have those two elements as inputs, then you apply the permutation. So in our case, this is anemoid. Then you get the two outputs and you will sum all those elements to get only one. And you can do the same if you have more elements as inputs. So if you have B elements, you apply your permutation, you get B outputs and you will sum all those elements to get only one. So we have used Jive for animal permutation, but of course it can be used for any other primitives. And finally, I wanted to give some benchmarks because well, when you're designing a primitive, you need to prove that you're efficient, so here is the proof. So we're, co we're comparing Anemoy with three other primitives. So Reciprine, Poseidon, that was uh, that were proposed two or three years before, and also with Griffin, that's gonna be presenting uh, in the next session. And here we're considering different proof system. So we have a one case that we've seen at the beginning of the presentation, and two other uh, proof system, Planck and Air. So I won't go into the details of uh, the proof system, but the idea is you want to have the smallest number of constraints as possible. So if we are taking uh, the first line as example, so this is for N1CS for two branches. So this means that for Animoy, we have uh, 76 uh, constraints. So what you can see is that we're um, better than Rescue Prime and Poseidon for N1CS and Planck. 
And we're quite on par with Griffin, but if you increase the number of branches, then Griffin is going to be better. So, yeah. Let's conclude now. So during this presentation, uh, we have seen Anemoy, so this new family of uh, ZK family hash function. But we also have some uh, contribution of fundamental interest because, for example, uh, the new ASBOB, the fly cell, could also be used for other applications. And we also have this new more drive that could also be used for other primitives. And it is also for the first time that we're in that CIFIL explicitly a link between arithmetization orientation and CCZ equivalence. And I say explicitly because uh, the designer of Fritz 2 were already using the inverse, which is a special case of CCZ equivalence. And it's also nice to see that Animoy already inspired different works. So there is a good implementation of Animo using JAF3 with Stobofunk. There is also another primitive called Arion that is using this notion of CCZ equivalence. And as I've said, with the flash cell, uh, we're uh, alighting AP and permutation of a prime beam. So there is also some work in that direction. So if you want to have more details, our paper is available on ePrint, and we also have a website. And without doubt, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions for Clemence? So I have a question. So usually when designers put up a new scheme, they put uh, some award or competition for breaking it. Do you have any plans to uh, put out challenges for cryptanalysts of the design? Uh, do you mean, uh, if we're planning to propose some challenges? Uh, yes. Oh, uh, we did not think about it yet because yeah, yeah there were some challenges proposed for a uh, Prime, Poseidon, Vestal um, Mimsi and Reinforcement Grid, like uh, one or two years before. So maybe in a few years, they're going to uh, propose other challenges, including Animoy and Griffin and maybe others. But for now, we didn't think about it. Okay, so no more questions. Let's thank uh, two speakers of this session. Thank you very much. So as the talks were a bit shorter, we have plenty of time for track switching. And to give you some advice, this here will continue with anonymous credentials. If you like this topic, this topic will continue in the MCC theater. And if you want to hear 